Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at how to handle a definite integral when u substitution is involved. And so we're just going to get started with some of these examples. I've got this integral from 1 to 2 of x times x squared plus 1 cubed. And so I would need to let my u equal x squared plus 1. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we'll do our du dx. So du dx would equal 2x. And so we're going to take a look at what we have left over. I've got an x dx left over. So I'm going to solve this equation for x dx. So we'll have 1 half du is equal to x dx. Now there's one extra step necessary. This wasn't new here. These boundaries, this lower limit of 1, that's an x equals 1 and the upper limit of 2, that's an x equals 2. So I need to use substitution for those numbers as well. So I can use this u equals x squared plus 1 relationship to figure out what my u's would be. So when x equals 1, if you plug in 1 for x, you get 1 squared plus 1, you get 2. When x equals 1, u equals 2. And when x equals 2, if you plug 2 in for x, you'll get that u is equal to 5. So my full substitution looks like this. The integral from 2 to 5 of u cubed times 1 half du. There's my u substitution. So now we can go through and find our antiderivative. So our antiderivative is u to the fourth over 4. And we're going to evaluate this from 2 to 5, and we cannot forget that we also have a 1 half out here. So I'm going to plug in my numbers. Of course, we plug the top number in first. So I'm going to get 5 to the fourth over 4, and then minus 2 to the fourth over 4. And unless I'm really interested in knowing what that value is simplified, I'm just going to keep it just like that. I've substituted in so I can keep the answer like that. Let's take a look at another example. I'm going to rewrite this first of all. We've got something in the bottom, so one thing to try is to take it to the top. So we're going to rewrite this as x times 1 plus 2x squared to the negative 1 half power. And let's go through our substitution. Our obvious choice for u is 1 plus 2x squared and then my du dx is equal to 4x. So 1 fourth du would equal x dx, which is what we had to substitute for. Then remember, these are x equals. That's x equals 0, and that's an x equals 2. So we need to get values for u. So, whenever x equals 0, we can plug 0 into this equation right here that relates u and x together. When x equals 0, u would equal 1. And when x equals 2, we plug 2 in for x. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9, so u is 9. So let's see what this integral turns into. We're going to have the integral from 1 up to 9 of u to the negative 1 half power times 1 fourth du. So there's our substitution. Now we can integrate. We're going to add one to the exponent and divide by that. So I've got 1 fourth times negative 1 half plus 1 is 1 half. Dividing by 1 half is the same thing as multiplying times 2. So I'm going to have 2u to the 1 half power and we're going from 1 to 9. So we're going to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. We'll plug the 9 in first. And the square root of 9, of course, 1 half power means square root. So the square root of 9 is 3. And then 3 times that 2 is 6. Then we're going to plug in our 1. And we're going to subtract it. The square root of 1 is 1 times 2 is 2. And so that would be my answer. And this is going to be pretty simple. 6 minus 2 is 4 times 1 fourth is, that's not too bad to simplify. Let's take a look at the trig one. Um, I'm going to let my u equal 3x, and then my du dx would equal 3. And all I have to solve this for is dx. So I'm going to solve this for dx, and I'm going to get that 1 third du is equal to dx. Also, whenever x 
is pi over 12. u is 3 times x, so u is going to be 3 pi over 12, which is pi over 4. And whenever x is pi over 9, then u is going to equal pi over 3. 3 pi over 9 pi over 3. So my substitution will look like this. The integral from pi over 4 to pi over 3 of sine of u times 1 third du. So we're going to find our antiderivative. The antiderivative for sine is negative cosine. And we're going to go from pi over 4 up to pi over 3. Okay. All right. So this that's a u, by the way. It looks sort of like a 0, but it's a u. So this will be 1 third times negative cosine of pi over 3. And the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. So that's negative 1 half. And then minus negative cosine of pi over 4, which would be actually turn into a positive because of the minus the negative and that would be 1 over the square root of 2 and I'm going to stop right there alright so find the area bounded by this graph on the x-axis from 0 to 2 so we know that this is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 of x times x squared plus 1 to the 1 half power dx so my u is going to equal x squared plus 1 and then my du dx is going to equal 2x. And what are we going to solve this for? Well, I've got an x dx here, so I'm going to solve that for x dx. So 1 half du is equal to x dx. And now we have to also do our bounds. These are x equals 0 and x equals 2. So whenever x equals 0, u is going to equal 1. And when x equals 2, u is going to equal 5. So we're going to change this into the integral from 1 to 5 of u to the 1 half times 1 half du. So now we're going to integrate. And we're going to add one to the exponent and divide by that. So I've got 1 half brackets here. 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. Dividing by 3 halves is the same thing as multiplying by 2 thirds. We're going to evaluate this from 1 to 5. So I'll scoot down here and I'll have, I've got to plug in the 5 first. So I've got 2 thirds times 5 to the 3 halves power. And then minus 2 thirds times 1 to the 3 halves power. And we know that that's just 1. Now 5 does not have a pretty square root. Um, so I'm definitely not going to try and simplify that. I'm, I'm definitely stopping there. All right, so we're going to review again what Riemann sums are real quick. And we've got water being pumped into a tank. And then we have to use data from this table with four subintervals to find a left Riemann sum to approximate. All right, so my first interval is going to be from 0 to 5. 0 is on the left, 5 is on the right. And then we want to use a left Riemann sum. So I'm going to do my height. My height will come from my left-hand endpoint. My height will be 14 times my width of 5. We're using the the function value on the left plus now the next interval is from 5 to 9 so that's going to be 18 times 4 and our next interval is from 9 to 15 so we'll use the function value on the left so that's going to be 20 times my width not the width from 9 to 15 that's 6 and then finally my last one will be 27 times my width of 5 so there's my left Riemann sum now we'll do a right one, a right Riemann sum. We're now going to be using the y values on the right. So on my first interval from 0 to 5, my y value is 18. We're doing r of 5 times my width of 5 plus, and then I will do 20 times 4 plus 27 times 6, and then my last one should be 32 times 5. And so that's my right Riemann sum, and I will see you guys tomorrow.